Good morning, everyone. So wonderful to see everyone's beautiful faces on this somewhat sunny morning. I, I'm hoping that that's the rest of the rain for, from this storm, but I think we have one coming up later this week. Um, this morning's uh, uh, March Schultzke Hoyle service, along with our uh, Dharma family service, it's, is going to be um, chaired by the fourth through eighth grade class. So welcome this morning. At this time, we'll have fruit and floral offering by the 4th through 8th grade class. Thank you. Please put your hands together for silent meditation. took a wrong step, but I realized this too was on the path of Buddha. Namanda, 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 Namanda. Reverend Smitty will now read the names of the March Schultzke Hoyle this month's memorial service. If you have a family member or friend that has passed away in the month of March, you may also offer incense. Reverend Laverne Sasaki. Kengo Yamamoto. Mary Sayoko Tomiyama. Emiko Ishisaki. Ayako Otsuji. Richard Iwao Ito Sr. Tohoru Idutsu Shimizu. Gilbert Shuji Wakisaki. Bruce Ryoyu Moriyama. Ben Shizuto Shekishiro. Mary Haruko Yagura. Shizuku Tsukamoto, 
Katie Tome Kraus. Tadami Maruyama. Maruyama. Susumu Kawato. Yoshiko Kawato. Sam Amano. Fred Nabetta. Rui Nemoto. Mark Esao Kasubuchi. Misao Kawasaki. Michael Kawamoto. Kiyoko Hazel Baker. Masahito Iwanaga. Fumi Martin. Rosie Yamada. Kyo Kawasaki. Chisato Kuroe. Soichi Nomura. Masaru Nuwata. Mieko Holt. Haruki Koba. Thomas Yanakura. Miyuki Takanashi. Hisaji Taniguchi. Hideo B. Watamura. Tsune Yamasaki. Zenpachi Kubota. Susumu Yagi. Shiro Takahashi. Kimi Terara. Grace Osaka. Sukeichi Yamada. Haruhiko Otsuji. Sunatorio. Masaru Yanagihara. Tets Tachiki. Anano Matsui. Masaki Tanazaki. Yuku Osaka. Kyotaro Osaka. Osaki. Teru Kiyono. Roy Yamada.
Uyemon Ohara. Shinzo Sakamoto. Shimeno Nabeta. Shina Nishiyue. Matsu Higuchi. Motono Oto. Husamatsu Morimoto. Akire Date. Yoshito Yamamoto. Zenkichi Iwashita. Shuji Kaneko. Hude Hirai. Tsune Haseyama. Ichinosuke Kiyono. Taiki Ikemi. Sawa Yamanashi. Dennis Suyenaga. Kura Hashimoto. Yoshigoro Mamiya. Tokumatsu Shiosaki. Shina Shindo. Mizunu Nakano. Yonekichi Tsubakihara. Sakuhichi Yano. Matsu Yamanishi. Iwakichi Okumura. Senkichi Yanagihara. Sadao Kinoshita. Tomie Torimaru. Tsugiyo Ishisaki. You're also welcome to come forward and offer incense if a friend or family member has passed away in the month of March, even though their name might not have been read today.
We will now be chanting Jusege on page 35 in the Purple Service Book. Cho se gan he she mudo do she gan pu manzo se hu jo so ga ga o muro ko hu i dai se shu hu sai sho bin gu se hu jo sho ga ga shi jo bun do myo sho cho ji po ku kyo mi sho mon se hu jo sho ga Ryoku jin shonen jo e shu bon gyo shigu mu jo do i shoten in shi jin riki en dai ko hu sho mu sai do Shojo san mukumyo ko sai shu yakunan kai hi chi again me shi kon mo an he soku sho aku do tsu daten zen shu mon ko so jo man zo i o ro ji po ni chi ga n chu ju ki ten ko on pu gen i shu kai ho zo to se ku do ku ho Jo o dai shu chu se po shi shi ku ku yo i sai but gu soku shu toku hon kan e shin jo man toku i san gai o Nyo but mu ge chi tsu dat ni hu sho gan ga ku e rik to shi sai sho son shi gan ya ko ka dai sen o kan do ko ku sho ten in to chin myo ke. Yodo se 
sai do Gasho Namanda 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 Please stand and put your hands together for the recitation of our pledge. This is located on a sheet of paper in the purple book. Breaking out of my shell, I shall show a warm smile and speak gentle words just like the kind Buddha, not becoming lost in my greed, anger, and ignorance. I shall think and act with an open mind, just like the calm and peaceful Buddha. Not putting myself first, I will share in the joy and sadness of others, just like the compassionate Buddha. Realizing the gift of life I have received, I shall strive to live each day to its fullest, like the Buddha who tirelessly works to liberate all. Namami Dabutsu. Namami Dabutsu. Please be seated. Reverend Smith will now give us her Dharma message. Well, good morning, everybody. Now, I'm grateful to be here this morning, and I'm grateful that you're all here, too. In fact, that's the topic I'd like to share some thoughts on today, having an attitude of gratitude. So please join me in Gasho. When we live in the spirit of gratitude, there will be much happiness in our life. The one who is grateful is the one who has much happiness well, the one who is ungrateful will not be able to have happiness. Namo Amitabhats, Namo Amitabhats, Namandab, Namandab, Namandab. That's a very non-traditional Jodo Shinshu quote, uh, and it comes from Zen teacher Thich Nhat Hanh, from his book on awakening and true happiness. I think that Thich Nhat Hanh is telling us that we have some choices to make. We can either choose to be grateful or we can choose to be grumpy. So if we choose to be grateful, we're more likely to be happy people, as he says. And if we choose to be grumpy, we'll probably be joining the group of unhappy people. Sometimes being grateful is just a matter of recognizing what we already have and knowing that we've received so much from so many others. So to illustrate this, I'd like to share a story with you. This is the story of the golden swan that was plucked naked. It comes from the book of the Buddha's Wisdom Bag, a retelling of Buddhist stories. It's written by Hiro Sachia, a Japanese religious scholar who often writes about Buddhism. So maybe you've previously heard the fable about the goose that laid the golden eggs. And in case you hadn't heard it or don't remember it, Hiro-san summarizes it at the beginning of the golden swan story. So in Aesop's version, there was a goose who laid golden eggs, hence the title, the goose that laid the golden eggs. 
The goose's owners reasoned that the bird must have a large nugget of gold somewhere inside in order to be able to lay golden eggs. So they killed it, cut it open, and looked for the nugget. But when they did this, they found that the goose was no different inside from any other goose. It was full of the normal goosey parts. In greedily hoping to find a fortune, the goose's owners instead lost their steady income of golden eggs. Well, there's a similar story in a Buddhist sutra, and the Buddhist version, however, has a golden swan. See the difference already? Geese and swans, very different birds. Anyways, it goes like this. A man died leaving his wife and three daughters and was reborn as a swan. You know, that's something I like about Buddhism. We don't sugarcoat things. Right up front, we're told that the main character dies. But the family must not have been Jodo Shinshu Buddhists because the dead gets reincarnation and returns to samsara as an animal instead of going to the pure land. Okay, let's get back to the story. He became an especially beautiful swan. All of its feathers were made of gold. Even more fascinating than the gold feathers was the fact that the swan remembered its life as a human. And so the swan decided to see how its former wife and children were doing. So the swan found his wife and daughters barely eking out a living. They were just barely getting by. And the swan presented himself to the former wife and children. I'm your former husband and former father, he announced. That must have been kind of shocking. And then he offered them a single golden feather from his wing. Sell this feather, the swan continued, and you will be able to live comfortably off the proceeds. And the wife and daughters were overjoyed. From that day on, the golden swan frequently came by and always left his former family a golden feather before returning to his flock. The family was indeed able to live comfortably because of the swan's generous gifts. But the former wife eventually became greedy. Birds can't be relied on, she told her daughters. That father of yours will probably get attracted to another swan and forget all about us. The next time he comes to visit, I'm going to pluck all of his golden feathers. And the daughters argued with their mother, saying that getting plucked would be terribly painful for their father, their father swan. They tried to tell their mother that being given one golden feather each visit was fine, and it allowed them to live in comfort. But their mother wouldn't listen to the girl's pleas and was determined to carry through with her plan. The next time the swan visited his former family, the wife caught him and plucked out all of his golden feathers. But to her surprise and dismay, the feathers that were forcibly removed instantly turned into plain white swan feathers. Oh, what have I done, the wife exclaimed. But it was too late. The golden feathers were all gone. Since the now naked swan could no longer fly, the woman felt sorry for what she had done. She placed the featherless swan in a pen in the backyard and fed and nurtured him the best she could. The swan's feathers eventually grew back, but they were now plain white feathers, like the feathers of the other ordinary swans. The golden feathers were all gone, after the swan regained his feathers and his strength, he flew back to his flock and never returned to visit his former wife and human children. So that's the Buddhist version of the goose that laid the golden eggs. It's very similar, but a little different in how the story ends. At least in the golden swan story, the bird isn't killed and cut open, it just gets plucked naked. But the lesson is pretty much the same since it cautions us about one of the three poisons in Buddhism, which is greed. Of course, the other two poisons are anger and stupidity. Stupidity is sometimes referred to as ignorance, but it means pretty much the same thing. I think stupidity is easier to remember, and it's still one of the three poisons. Anyway, we don't have to conclude that story of the golden swan that was plucked naked is just telling us what not to do as in not to be greedy. It's also telling us what we should do, 
is in being grateful for what we do have. Sometimes the three poisons, and in this case greed, make us forget the many things we already do have. When we want more money, bigger and better toys or games, or the latest electronic, we're being kind of greedy. We forgot that we already have some money, and we have a few toys and games that we like, or that a perfectly fine iPhone will suit us even if it's not the latest model. Greed kind of blinds us to what is already present in our lives. Just like the woman in the story, we think we should have more. And in her case, she wanted more golden feathers, which she could exchange for more cash. She was blind to the fact that she and her daughters were already living well by selling the one golden feather they were given each visit the swan made. So greed made the wife forget about that attitude of gratitude that each of us should be practicing. Gratitude is one of the most fundamental, most important Jodo Shinshu practices that we have. It's a practice of recognizing all that we have received and all that we should be grateful for. We should ha all have a deep sense of gratitude for all that we have and all that we are. It's a simple practice, but it's also one that's easy to overlook. And we can use the reminder of this important practice and the problems we run into when we overlook all that we should be grateful for. So please join me once again in Gasho as we express our gratitude for all that we have, all that we are, by together proclaiming Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namo Amida Buts, Namandab, 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 Namandab. Thank you, Reverend Smitty, for your method message. Please stand for the Gotha Buddha loves you on page 106 in our service book. Good morning. I was asked by the well care group. Uh, we uh, sometimes get lucky uh, through Carol. We were able to get like 20 uh, uh, older uh, bouquet of flowers from a uh, shop that want that's unable to sell it, but it's still good enough where it could be reused and and given to maybe some family members or maybe a neighbor that's in your your uh, neighborhood. So if you have the time. Uh, please come and pick up uh, some of the 20 bouquet of flowers we have left. You may have to clean it up a little bit and cut the stem, but it's reusable, so if we, if we can, you know, it'd be a nice way to uh, uh, make someone happy. During this month, the pre-K through third grade class is hosting its annual Little Kids Can Do Big Things donation drive for the Ronald McDonald House. We are accepting new board games, word search, 
and crossword puzzles, coloring books, and crayons. We have a box in front of the office for you to drop off your donations. If you have questions, please see Mr. Greg Yonakura. Good morning, everyone. Just a reminder, um, the Dharma School camping trip will be the weekend of April 19th through the 20th, no, 19th, 20, 21st. And we are going to Mount Laguna uh, Burnt Rancheria Campground, and we will be sending out info, um, sign-ups, and everything uh, this week. So look forward to your email. Thanks. Uh, BWA fundraiser, uh, Maki Sushi fundraiser is March 17th. Um, pick up a flyer in the back. And uh, English tea, it's to benefit the Lahaina Mission, uh, Hong, Hong Wangji, and BWA. It's Saturday, May 4th. And pick up a flyer in the back. Hi, in terms of save the date, I just want to let folks know that March 24th, a few Sundays from now, following the service, we'll be showing the short film of Found Silence, and then followed by a nice lunch, lunch is free, and then a discussion with representatives from HEB. More information will be coming to you by email. There's a mention in the CAIHO, the schedules have been adjusted slightly, but hope you can make it. And if you check the website, there's information about a, a musician from Osaka, Shamisen, who will be performing t two times in San Diego, uh, March 15th and March 16th. The March 16th performance is here at the temple at 11. And if you order in time, uh, you'll be able to get a bento uh, courtesy of Kiku Garden. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I have several announcements. First off, the uh, um, temple, we're having another food drive. Um, so uh, through the San Diego Food Bank, uh, you may bring your donations of non-perishable food items to the temple. And uh, we'll be collecting. You could just drop off your donations in the red bins. There's one downstairs as you enter the temple, and there's one over in the annex or there's a box also in the foyer next to the office. Uh, we'll be doing it, Temple will be collecting foods up until the 23rd. I believe on that particular day, it'll be a drive-through. So if you, if you uh, would like to drop off your food items, you may do so between the hours of 9 and 11 on the 23rd. Uh, next month, I think I uh, announced this last week, but for, we're having a second annual Tostada Bingo Fundraiser Fiesta on Sunday, April 7th, following the uh, uh, Hanamatsuri service. Everyone's invited to come out for, uh, for uh, the uh, fundraiser. Um, the event is for 13 years and up. The cost is two, $12 and for 12 and under, it's $5. So you get uh, tostadas and uh, rice and beans and uh, dessert and uh, five games of bingo. So, uh, and then so it, last year was a really fun event. This year will be, you know, we're, we're expecting it to be another fun one. Uh, you could sign up in the office or uh, there'll be a link on the temple website, you can sign up as well to place your orders. And um, we'll be, uh, oh, the, to, uh, the deadline to order your uh, package is uh, March 28th. And then we're also, uh, temple's accepting donations for prizes toward the bingo, uh, for uh, kids' prizes, uh, you know, uh, gift cards, so forth, so uh, please, uh, you know, pro, you know, make a donation toward it if you if you have some uh, gift.
gift cards laying around and you want to get rid of it, you know, thinking, what is that? Oh, yeah. Um, the, this year, the, fu the funds will go toward the Hopahangwanji uh, uh, Mission of Hawaii, the Lahaina Wildlife Relief, Fire, Fire Wildlife Relief Fund. And then um, this is looking, at, looking down the road in October. Our temple will be hosting the annual Southern District Buddhist Conference on sa Saturday, October 19th. And that day, our, the guest speaker will be our Bishop Reverend Marvin Harada. And he'll be, do, be, he'll be providing the English message and the uh, Japanese message will be by Reverend uh, Hibiki Murakami from the LA Betuin. So please save the date for the Nembutsu and uh, um, you know, more details will be coming out in the coming months. And, and then we'll also be, uh, um, the event is including Dharma school teachers, BWA, the Sangha, any Dharma school students that'd like to attend. So, uh, you know, keep that date in mind. Okay, and um, I think that's it. Oh yeah, one more. <laughs> you know, next week is the time change, so uh, before you go to bed on Saturday night, please turn your clock forward one hour because it's spring forward, so with the time change. Or if you don't change your clock, you'll be late <laughs> for service next week. Okay, thank you. Thank you to Reverend Smitty for officiating today's service and Dharma School message, and to the minister's assistants for setting up the onaijin, and thank you to Miss Sharon Suzaki for ringing the concho, and Miss Ann Ong for playing the organ, and thank you to our tech team for live streaming today's service. Minister's assistants, Yukari Williams will give Dharma message in Japanese following the adult adult portion of the service, and Miss Katie Sumida will continue to ch ch chair the service as we go to our class, and Dharma school students are now ex excused to leave their Dharma school, are now excused to their Dharma school class. You may offer, please offer incense before you leave the hondo. Thank you. Now we'll have the big kids service. Uh, we will start with the Vandana and Tisarana, which can be found on page 96. And uh, I believe uh, Sm Smitty Sensei wants us to read it all from the beginning. Yes, we'll chant it all together. Namor 
Tasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Homage to him, the exalted one, the enlightened one, the supremely awakened one. Udam saranam gachami, damam saranam gachami, sangam saranam gachami. I go to the Buddha for guidance. I go to the Dharma for guidance. I go to the Sangha for guidance. Namo Kie Butsu. Namo Kie Ho. And now, now Smitty Sensei will give us the adult Dharma message. Please join me in gusho. Everything in life is a gift. When we begin to look at life from the perspective of the recipient, that everything in life is a gift, what we know, what we own, what we have achieved, they are all in a sense gifts because nothing can be accomplished solely on one's own. Therefore, the Shin Buddhist way of life is the life of unending gratitude. The more one becomes grateful, the more one becomes humble. The more one becomes humble, the less one needs in life. The less one needs in life, the more one truly has. Namo Amida Namanda, 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 Namanda. Well, good morning again. Um, that, again, is uh, maybe a little more traditional reading from uh, Jodo Shinshu teacher, um, but uh, still not from uh, Shinran-sama or Renyo-sama or <laughs> some of the really big ones. But I decided to begin with that quote from one who is um, very important to all of us from uh, Reverend Marvin Harada, our BCA bishop, because it reminds us that everything in life, even that which we think of as our own accomplishments, possessions, or achievements, and even life itself, are actually things which we have received through efforts, but through the efforts of others. These things are all gifts. And what's the first thing we do when we receive a gift? We look up the value and decide if we can make more by selling it on eBay, Etsy, Craigslist, or next door. No, of course not. Um, the first thing we do is to say thank you. We acknowledge the gift with our expression of gratitude. Then we look up the value of the gift. So Professor Jeff Wilson, uh, who is an ordained Jodo Shinshu minister, tells us that the goal of Shin Buddhism's central practice, the recita rec recitation of the Nembutsu, is not to attain Buddhahood for ourselves, but to express gratitude for all that we have received. And he continues that we don't practice to achieve anything, 
not enlightenment, good karma, a favorable rebirth, or material rewards. We practice simply to give thanks for what we have received. It's a small shift in one pers one's perspective, but when pursued, it can be transformative. This is the essence of living as a Jodo Shinshu Buddhist. This is living a life of gratitude. So why am I talking about gifts and gratitude right now? Not because you need the reminder, it's because I'm the one who's been imbibing in the three poisons, greed, anger, and ignorance, and can really use the reminder of this important practice, this essence of living a Jodo Shinshu life. I'm the one who's been running into problems by overlooking all that I should be grateful for, by instead being selfish and considering only myself. Apparently, I haven't been taking our pledge to heart. To explain a bit, I haven't been around here lately, as some of you might have noticed, uh, because in mid-December, I had hip replacement surgery. That is, I received a new hip, this one right here. It is, by the way, a $30,000 piece of titanium hardware. And while I looked up the value, I've decided not to try to make money by selling it on eBay, Etsy, Craigslist, or next door. In many ways, it really was a gift. My insurance paid for the surgery, parts and all, as well as my overnight stay in the hospital. And the hospital staff had me walking just hours after the surgery, and a week later, I started physical therapy for rehab and recovery. And when I think of how I was pre-surgery and how I am now, two and a half months later, I need to remind myself that I received and continued to receive so much from so many people. From my primary care doctor who said, yep, this is a problem, we need to take care of it, to my surgeon and her surgical team, to the nurses and hospital staff, to my physical therapist and all the PT assistants, I owe a great deal of gratitude. Of course, I realize that I also owe a debt of gratitude to, to Jackie, my wife, who's taken care of me in my recovery. She's been doing everything, including initially helping me get in and out of bed, getting me dressed and undressed, because I couldn't do that for myself, um, tracking and giving me my, my medications, making or having meals delivered, mostly having them delivered, <laughs> chauffeuring me everywhere while I couldn't drive, et cetera, et cetera. And while I've been gradually recovering, there was so much that I couldn't do for myself, especially during those first two months and really during the first few weeks after surgery. You know, simple things like putting on and tying my shoes were impossible for me to do initially. And I wasn't joking about getting in and out of bed. I really couldn't do that on my own for at least the first week. And this experience really showed me how much I rely on others every day and how much I fail to express my gratitude for all that I receive. I wasn't just being a bad minister. I was being a really bad Jodo Shinshu Buddhist. Of course, aside from acknowledging all those who are taking care of my physical needs, there was a whole group of people who were taking care of everybody's spiritual needs in my absence. I'm grateful to Reverend Lamor Laverne Emory, who officiated the lion's share of services and attended meetings while I was unable to be here. And I owe my gratitude to the certified MAs, Yukari, Sharon, Bill, and Arturo, who, spent their who sped up their training in order to lead Sunday Dharma services well, I couldn't. And to Katie for her endlessly trying to answer everybody's questions. My gratitude also has to go to uh, Laverne Sensei again for guiding the certified MAs in their crash course of how to properly be a doshi or, or lead services. And I have to express my gratitude to Reverend Gibbs too, who traveled from Pasadena to officiate the Nirvana Day service when I was just barely given the okay to return to work. 
and my gratitude should also go to the board of directors and all of you who allowed me to take time off to have the surgery and rehab and recuperate. So it's easy for us, for me, to think that everything in the past couple of months happened because of my own efforts. I'm the one who endured the pain and the difficulties as I went through and recovered from surgery. I'm the one who worked hard and continued to work hard doing my physical therapy and regaining strength and capabilities each day. I'm the one who went from using a walker to using a cane to walking on my own. But that's a very arrogant and ignorant way to view things. When I consider these recent events in my life, there was truly nothing that I did on my own, certainly not the surgery. My great failure was to ignore what everyone was doing for me and believe that my progress and the accomplishments were mine alone. That's not living a Shin Buddhist life. That's not living a life of gratitude. As Shin Buddhists, we must strive to truly understand our absolute dependence on other people, all other beings, and all forms of life that sustain our own lives. And by we and our, I'm really saying I and my. I'm the one who has not been recognizing all that I receive. I'm the one who's been failing to express that gratitude lately. Only by awakening to the interdependent, interconnected, and impermanent nature of our existence can we begin to appreciate the gifts of this life, the gifts of each day, the gift of all we encounter, and the preciousness of each moment. Only in awakening to these gifts can we become aware of our profound debt of gratitude to countless people and beings, to life in all its forms, and to the great wisdom and compassion which embraces us always. When we awaken to the truth that we exist solely through the gifts and benevolence of others, our response must surely be to bow our heads in humility and place our palms together and say Namo Amida Butsu in gratitude and joy for being allowed to walk this path together. That's what we mean by a practice of gratitude, a practice that I need to get back into the habit of doing naturally, of doing with humility, not hubris. So please join me again in Gasho. Everything in life is a gift. When we begin to look at life from the perspective of the recipient, that everything in life is a gift. What we know, what we own, what we have achieved, they are all in a sense gifts because nothing can be accomplished solely on one's own. Therefore, the Shin Buddhist way of life is the life of unending gratitude. The more one becomes grateful, the more one becomes humble. The more one becomes humble, the less one needs in life. The less one needs in life, the more one truly has. Namandab, 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 namandab. Can everybody please stand and turn to page 128 for the Gatha Ondoksan?
You may be seated. We will have music meditation. Reverently, we come before the shrine of Amida Buddha, the Holy One, the Perfect One. With gratitude, we have brought our offering of love and devotion to honor him. We earnestly resolve to strive to understand his holy teaching and to walk every day in his blessed path, so that, like him, we may attain the peace of nirvana. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. For those who speak or want to learn to listen to Japanese, please come up a little closer to the front for the message by Yukari, wherever she went to. There she is. She's sitting in the guest minister spot. <laughs> and uh, everybody else, please uh, offer incense and then uh, go down to hospitality in the dining room. And happy Girls' Day.
はい、あのそれでは日本語法話を始めます。ではあの合唱と礼拝をお願いいたします。障子の句会ほとりなし、久しく沈める我をば、乱ぐ税の船のみぞ、乗せて必ず渡しける。名も阿弥陀仏、名も阿弥陀仏、名も阿弥陀仏、名も阿弥陀仏、名も阿弥陀仏。はい、ありがとうございます。皆さんこんにちは。お元気でいらっしゃいましたか<笑>えサンデーゴ仏教会ではえ3月の17日にお彼岸の法要を行いますえそのためえ今日はお彼岸についてお話をしたいと思いますえ私はあまりお彼岸のことはよく知らなかったので今回勉強してきました少しだけ<笑>皆さんはもうご存知だと思いますえところで今日は3月3日ですよね3月3日って何かあの何の日だかご存知ですかひな祭りあ皆さん知ってますひな祭りひな祭りってあの女の子の、あのー、なんだっけひな祭りは、えー、女の子が健康で優しい子に育つようにと願いを込めてするお祭りですそしてお部屋にはひな人形を飾りますなんで今日こんなひな祭りの話をしてるかというと,、えー、と今日は私の父の私のお父さんのお誕生日だったんですそうなんです私の父はえ私の父は1919年の3月3日に生まれましたねひな祭りって女の子のお祭りの日に男の子お父さん男の子で生まれたので小さい頃なんかからかわれたりしたかなってちょっと思ったんですけど。でもあの私の父は見かけによらずとても優しい人でしたそれで猫が大好きでした<笑>だからきっとあの花祭りに生まれたから優しいお父さんになったのかなと思います<笑>えさてお彼岸の話をしますえお彼岸とはお浄土のことなんですね。でまた彼岸とはお浄土のことなんですけどえ私たちのいるこの世界を志願って言います。お浄土がお彼岸で私たちがいるこの迷いの世界は志願になります。お彼岸の時によく「腹蜜」という言葉を聞かれると思いますえサ,ンクスサンスクリット語でパーラミーターの音を漢字で表したものですで「あの腹蜜」っていう意味は「頭皮がん」で頭皮がんというのはお浄土にたどり着くという意味です。でその腹蜜はお浄土に生まれるための修行のことを言います
で大乗仏教では、えー、菩薩が仏になるための修行のことを言いますえ皆さんは「シックスパラミタース」っていうのはよくお聞きになったことあると思うんですけどお彼岸の時にいろんな先生方が「えー、シックスパラミタース」のお話をされると思います。これがあ日本語では「六波羅蜜」と言いますえこれがですねえこれは私など凡夫にとってはとても難しい修行になりますであの浄土真宗では阿弥陀如来が法蔵菩薩の時に私たちの代わりにこの修行をなさいました法蔵菩薩はこの修行を完全に果たされて知恵とお慈悲の阿弥陀如来になられました生じの句会ほとりなし久しく沈める我をば御田具勢の船のみぞ乗せて必ず渡しけるえこれは先ほどご紹介した親鸞上人のご和さんで阿弥陀如来のお慈悲を大きな船に例えてえ私たちを彼岸まで連れて行ってくださることを教えてくださっています阿弥陀様のお慈悲は大きい船のようで私たちはその船に乗せられているので六波羅蜜を六波羅蜜を成し遂げることができない私たちでも何にも心配しなくて生きていけるそして阿弥陀様が、えー、私たちをお浄土へ連れて行ってくださるという意味でございますえではお彼岸をどう過ごすか私は提案したいと思いますお浄土は西の方向にあると言われていますでもこれは例え話なのでお浄土が地球上の西の方に西の方角にああるというわけではありませんだって地球は丸いから西へ西へとずっと行ったらまた元に,元に戻ってきますよね。<笑>だからでもあのまあこれは例え話なんですけどでもあの西の方にあるお浄土を想像してみるのも良いかもしれませんお浄土のことをちょっと思ってみるどんな,かんどんなところかなって思っお彼岸の際に思ってみるのもいいかなって思っています私たちはサンデーゴに住んでいるのでえ海岸で日が沈むのを見ることができますよねいろんなビーチがあってきれいな夕日が沈むのを見ることができますなのでサンディエゴのビーチで美しい夕日が沈むのを見るときお浄土のことを想像してみてください夕日が沈むのを私たちの人生の終わりに例えてみてみください夕日が沈んだ後
空の色が変わって明るい青色から濃いオレンジ色に変わる様子をゆっくりと味わってください濃いオレンジ色から紫色に変わる空を眺めてお浄土のことを思ってください私はお浄土は夕日が沈んだ直後の空のように美しいところだと思っています今日はお彼岸とはお浄土のことだということをお話ししましたパラミーターとは陶彼岸お浄土へ到着するという意味で仏になるための修行のことです、えー、浄土真宗ではお浄土へは阿弥陀様のお慈悲が私たちを連れて行ってくださると言っていますサンディーゴの海岸で美しい夕日を沈むの夕日を沈むのを味わってお浄土のことを思ってください今日はお,もお参りいただきまして本当にありがとうございましたそれでは最後にもう一度合唱と礼拝をお願いいたします生阿弥陀仏生阿弥陀仏生阿弥陀仏生阿弥陀仏どうもありがとうございました